A new Breakin. Tank the boss here facing away from the raid. Range and healers spread out around the boss. Off tanks tank the adds. The adds cleave and a main priority to nuke down as they spawn periodically throughout the fight. When the adds spawn they also come with a load of scarabs. If you die you spawn more scarabs. Kill them. When the boss casts Locust Swarm your tank needs to kite the boss around the room. The tank can avoid getting hit by the boss by using either a swiftness potion or having a hunter use aspect of the pack and running with them. Grand Window Feelunner Nuke the follower adds first, they randomly charge in silence around them so maybe kite them out of the group if you can't kill them fast enough. Leave the other adds alive for now, the boss does a rain of fire ability, move out of that, also a poison volley, you can cleanse this. The boss will enrage every one minute, you need a priest to mind control one of the worshippers and cast the silence on the boss, it will dispel the enrage and kill the ad. Rinse and repeat, kill that boss! Maxner! Tank this boss in the middle of the room facing away from everybody else. Have two off tanks pick up all the small spiders in the room throughout the fight. They tend to spawn on opposite sides of the room. Group them up and AoE them down. Every now and then the boss will web wrap three people which knocks you back to the edge of the room and cocoons you. Have a group of ranged assigned to attack these webs to get people out. Every 40 seconds the boss will cast web spray, which will stun everyone in the raid for 8 seconds. You should pre-hop the tank and maybe pop some cooldowns too if you need. Dispel poisons, use nature resist pots or gear if you suck. Kill it! Noth the Plagebr. The main mechanic of this fight is all about decursing Curse of the Plaguebringer, which if left too long will wipe the raid. You can tank this boss wherever, he will cast a blink which will slow everyone around him and drop aggro. DPS should hold off attacking him until the main tank gains aggro back. The blink usually coincides with ad spawning, off tanks pick them up and DPS should swap to them and nuke them down. After 90 seconds the boss will teleport away and you'll have to kill all the adds. The boss will stay here until the adds are dead or until 90 seconds has passed. This will happen two more times, 110 seconds after he reappears, and again three minutes after the second time he reappears. Hegan the Dirty Get ready to kick people from your guild because this is without doubt the easiest boss in the game ever. The boss has a mana burn aura around him so healers in range stand on the boss podium whilst your melee and the tank tank the boss on the lower ground. Tank him here to begin with. The main mechanic will begin shortly. The room is split into four parts in which sludge will come out of the ground in three quarters of the room. Avoid this. The sludge will move across the room from left to right and back, repeating until the second phase. Also, the boss will teleport people outside the room, run back before phase two begins. The second phase is simply the same eruption mechanic, just a bit quicker, and the boss teleports to the podium so now the melee can laugh at the massively inferior ranged and healers fail at this mechanic. Repeat, kill the boss. Luarthab. This boss is a big DPS race, spores will spawn throughout the fight that when they die will give 5 people around them a 50% increased critical strike bonus and no threat gain. Don't let this hit your tanks. You need to make sure everyone gets this buff ASAP starting with your biggest pumpers. The main mechanic of this fight is Corrupted Mind which gives a 1 minute cooldown on healing spells. You need to prioritize these heals to keep the tank up which means that DPS should try and use health potions, bandages and health stones to heal themselves. Judgment of Light or Poison Cleansing Totem can help alleviate some of the damage going out. After 2 minutes the boss will begin casting Inevitable Doom every 30 seconds, this deals a lot of damage. After 5 minutes he casts every 15 seconds, so hurry up and kill that boss! Round Man This fight has pretty much one tactic, which is Hateful Strike. This deals a lot of damage to a person in melee range that both has the most health and is within the top 4 of threat. This won't hit your main tank, it is a good idea to have at least 4 tanks to be able to soak these hits. 
Heal up the off tanks ASAP so they can continue soaking the hateful strikes. At 5% the boss will enrage so maybe hold cooldowns for that, otherwise he also enrages at 7 minutes. So get ready to make quick work of Patchworth. <laughs> Grabola. Pull this boss to the edge of the room, he drops a poison cloud on his location which expands over time, so you want to slowly kite him around the entire edge of the room the whole time. Make sure the main tank is the only one in front of the boss as he casts slime spray which spawns a slime for every target that is hit. Nuke these down. He will randomly inject players with mutating injection. The debuff lasts for 10 seconds and when it expires it deals AoE damage and drops a poison cloud. Make sure to run away from the group when you get this and drop the poison cloud in a suitable location so you're not going to mess up the tank route 30 seconds down the line. At 30% he injects players more frequently so kill the boss before you run out of room. Gluth. Tank this big boy facing the door. The boss casts a 10% healing reduction every now and then so swap at 4-5 to five stacks. The boss will also fear everyone within 20 yards every 20 seconds so either fear ward the tanks or prepare to die. Hunters need to trank shot the enrage every 10 seconds. Zomboys will spawn near the grate at the back of the room. You need to have DPS aggro and kite these but keep them as far back as possible. Try to avoid getting hit by them, slows and novas are very epic. Every 105 seconds the boss will cast decimate. This drops all the zombies to 5% health and they will begin walking to the boss need to kill them all before they reach him otherwise they heal him. After the third decimate the boss will permanently enrage so kill it quick. Thadjus. For the first phase you need to split your raid into two groups. Both groups need healers and a tank but the groups need to be melee in one and ranged and casters in the other. The melee group goes to Fergus whilst the ranged group goes to Stallone. Stallone does a bit more damage than Fergus, but Fergus drains mana. Kill them both within a few seconds of each other. Jump over this ledge, kick anyone that doesn't make it first try. Two raid wide debuffs will appear on you. This is the polarity mechanic. You will be assigned a charge of positive or negative. Split the room into two sides with negative on the left and positive on the right. Tank the boss in the center of the platform. If you're stacked with the wrong polarity, you will cause and take damage from everyone around you. If you are in the correct polarity you will get a big DPS buff. Every 30 seconds your polarity might change so pay attention. You have 5 seconds to get to the right side before the effect begins. Thaddeus has a 5 minute enrage timer, kill that boss. Inspector Razor Veins. For this boss you will need at least 2 priests and 4 tanks. You should begin this fight with the priest mind controlling an ad and taunting the boss. Your tank should be assigned to pick up an ad each. Tank the boss here, this allows you to easily line of sight his disrupting shout which you can cast every 25 seconds. The main tactic is to keep subsequent mind controls on the ads to keep the boss tanked. When a mind control is almost finished the other priest should begin mind controlling another ad to taunt the boss. When the mind control is finished have your specified tank for that ad ready to pick it up. The ad should be healed whilst they're mind controlled as the boss hits way too hard for players to tank. Repeat this process until the boss dies, then kill the ads. Goth Chick Split the raid into two groups with equal tanks and healers. One side is melee, the other is ranged. Range goes on the live side, melee on the dead side. Range will want to prioritize unrelenting riders, then death knights, and then trainees. When you kill a mob on the live side, it will respawn on the dead side for melee to re-kill. Melee will want to prioritize trainees, then riders, then death knights, and finally the horses. Live side need to be aware of killing stuff too fast so the melee don't get swamped. After a time the adds will stop spawning and the boss will teleport down to one side. He does a shadow bolt that does nothing, he'll swap sides every 40 seconds until he's at 40% at which point the gate will open up and you can all nuke him down together, as a team. The 4 Norsemen. For this fight you'll want at least 8 tanks and 12 healers. Each boss puts a unique stacking dot on anyone around it for a while. Your job is to not go over 3 stacks. There is a safe spot in the middle of the room. You will be assigned a group and rotate in to attack the boss until you have 3 stacks. Then you go back to the safe zone. You will need to alternate which boss you attack every time you leave the safe zone as your previous stacks will not have fallen off by the time you need to rotate back in. 
Healers, you will be in a group of three on each boss. You will not go to the safe zone. One by one, you will move clockwise to the next boss for every stack you gain. So the first healer in every group will move to the next boss as soon as they have one stack. Second healer will move at two, and the third will move at three. After the first transition, you will always stay at your current boss until you have three stacks, and then you move on. Each boss has their own separate abilities you will need to look out for. Thane Corthaz, this boss drops a meteor which will need to be soaked by every person in that group. Lady Blamu drops a void zone on the ground which needs to be avoided. High Lord Mograine, best server of you, has a dot that deals a lot of damage so prepare to heal the tank. Sir Zeliok does a chaining holy wrath that deals increased damage the more people it hits. Stand at max range and spread out by at least 5 yards to avoid this. Melee shouldn't attack this boss. Your DPS will be killing Thane and Mograine first. Once they are dead you will join the tanks and healers on the other side of the room and assist in killing them. The bosses, not the tanks and healers. Sir Pipperon. Pepperoni does a lot of frost damage, so you want to have resistance gear and potions. While on the ground, you will need to avoid blizzards and decurse life drain on players. When the boss flies up into the air, it will ice block five targets. The ice block also does AoE damage when it's first cast, so spread out if you can. The boss will then cast Frost Breath, which will one shot everyone. To avoid this, all you need to do is hide behind one of the five ice blocks. Now you just rinse and repeat until this boss is dead. Kel Phase Clan. Phase 1. Ads will spawn. Have your tanks pick up the abominations, which deal a stacking mortal wound on the tank. Melee should nuke this down. Range should kill the soul weavers, as they'll knock people back when they get in melee range. The range will also need to kill the soldiers of the frozen waste as soon as possible, as they deal AoE damage on the entire raid when they hit someone. When Phase 1 is over, Kel Phase Clan will be active. He cannot be taunted, you should try and pull him to the centre of the room and have your raid spread out around the boss. Melee should form a diamond shape around him. You will need to have an interrupt chain for Frostbolt, as this is a one-shot ability. Every 10 seconds he can cast Shadow Fissure, which you simply step out of. Every 15 seconds he can cast an uninterruptible AoE Frostbolt. Every 20 seconds he can cast Mana Detonation, which depletes someone's mana by 50% and causes AoE damage. Every 30 seconds he casts Frost Blast, which freezes a player and anyone around within 10 yards of them. It will continue to freeze anyone within 10 yards for the remainder of its duration. You need to just heal through this until Frost Blast wears off. Finally, every minute the boss will mind control the tank and four more players, so your off tank needs to have secondary threat. You should CC the mind controls, threat is also dropped. Phase 3 starts at 40% health. It is exactly the same as Phase 2, but 5 adds will spawn. You can shackle 3 of them but two of them must always be tanked. When a raid member dies, they will gain a 15% damage increase. You should ignore these adds and DPS power through on the boss. Keep up interrupts and spreading, and you too can kill this boss. Pipe Boss. This is one of the trickier bosses in Nax that you will encounter. However, with good preparation, you can avoid this raid killer. What you want to do is stand so that your character is directly above the pipe and walk in the direction that the pipe travels. After some time walking, you will spot a large opening in which you want to jump through. Try to avoid jumping off the pipe, as this will cause you to no longer walk along the pipe. The Slime Gauntlet This is a boss you'll face just after Patchword. Kungyun has contacted me directly to make this video, as it is one of the bosses that they wiped on the most in vanilla. For this boss, I'd suggest turning your game settings right down to boost maximum frame rate. I wouldn't attempt this boss without a 300Hz gaming monitor and a WoW foot pedal binded to move forward. Now, to get down to the fight. A lot of people don't realise, but there is actually a tiny gap in between each slime that you can walk through. What you need to do is position yourself in between this gap and walk through. Just want to give a quick shout out to my Patreons, they'll all be scrolling down the screen now. I could not have done this without each and every one of their support. Sorry this is a general voiceover, there's just way too many to list off. Thank you again. Kind regards, Fards Gaming.